What's good, everybody? Welcome back to Drop the Mic, Episode 5. Today, our sole purpose is to create an NBA roster worse than the 2024 Detroit Pistons, who at the time of recording this video hold a record of 6-40. We're going to create our roster of unfortunate players and then sim the team in 2K24 at the end of the video to see if they live up to the hype. This won't be an easy task, but before we draft our players, we'll have to establish some ground rules. Number 1. All players drafted must be current NBA players. Number 2. All players must make sense to play the position that we draft them into. Obviously, we can't have Mitchell Robinson out here running point guard. Some more versatile players can be put in different positions, but that's going to be a case-by-case -case basis. Number 3. All starters on our team must be starters in their current NBA rosters. Number 4. All bench unit players must play at least 15 minutes a game, and more generally, all players on the roster must be serviceable NBA players. We don't want Luka Garza and Mac McClung out here balling for us. Number 5. We get one Detroit Pistons pick, which means we get one player off the current Detroit Pistons roster. And number 6. The team will consist of five starters, five backups, and two wildcard players according to my choosing. Now let's get into it and see how bad of a roster we can create. At the time of making this video, Chris Dunn is the current starting point guard of the Utah Jazz. Dunn this season is averaging 5 points, 3 rebounds, and 4 assists. After nearly being booted from the league, Dunn has found himself a solid role in Salt Lake City. However, with a limited offensive arsenal and a hesitancy to shoot threes and space the floor, Dunn will pretty much exclusively provide defense and run this team with little playmaking or spacing. Perfect guy to have the rock in his hands as our starting point guard. Seriously man, what isn't there to say about Jordan Poole? I've never seen a more perfect situation for the baddie daddy. Currently having the worst season of his career as a serviceable NBA player, the self-proclaimed owner of the Wizards will hopefully share that perception with our team, overshooting while serving as a cone on defense. Averaging 17 points and 4 assists, Poole isn't quite a playmaker or scorer, he kind of just exists. Shooting just over 30% from 3, Poole's excessive shooting will hopefully hurt this team as much as possible. Remember when everyone compared Jeremy Sohan to Dennis Rodman because they both had colored hair and are notoriously sorry offensive players? Jeremy Sohan will serve as our first floor spacer for obvious reasons, as he's currently shooting a modest 37% on limited attempts and pretty much only hits bank shot threes. Sohan will do pretty much nothing in this offense besides play point guard when Dunn subs out, as the entire NBA media witnessed Sohan fail at this for an entire half of a season this year. I don't really know man, maybe he could sell tickets with his one-handed free throws, but the rawness of Sohan really leaves no spot for him to shoot in his limited attempts or develop with this franchise. Solid defender though, for sure. The starting power forward for our roster will be Xavier Tillman, who has been starting on the Grizzlies recently at the time of making this video. Shooting 24% from the three-point arc and also shooting 39% from the field as an undersized big, Tillman really has no strengths offensively. Currently averaging 5 points and 5 rebounds, we can leave Tillman to try his little heart out on defense for us. Go ahead buddy, wear yourself out. A role player for the star-studded Grizzlies will find his home on a team with zero star power. What could possibly go wrong? Keeping up with the tradition of role players in starting spots, the undersized 6'9 center Kevon Looney really doesn't provide anything outside of brick wall screens and rebounds for the Golden State Warriors. Taller Draymond will find himself constantly getting bodied trying to guard the likes of Joel Embiid and Nikola Jokic with an absolutely foul excuse for a help side defense from his fellow starters. 
whatever spacing this team can muster pretty much ends with Looney, who will continue to clog the paint for the offense as Looney outright refuses to shoot threes. Also, with 0.3 blocks and 0.5 steals a game this season, Looney really offers little on-ball defensive versatility. Combined with Tillman, this pairing of these undersized bigs will be dubbed the Tin Towers, as they each offer nothing defensively. Giannis will call these two the Berlin Wall. The mid-range maestro, the French Frenchman. The utterer of the inconceivable quote, I hope to stay in Detroit. Using our one Detroit Pistons pick, we're going to go with Killian Hayes for our six-man and backup combo guard. One of Detroit's many draft flops, Hayes currently has a field goal percentage of 40%, decently below league average, and shoots a miserable 29% from three. Refusing to neither drive or shoot the three, Hayes continues to grind the gears of any statistics professor with his awful IQ. With high hopes on defense, Hayes still has yet to live up to the potential that scouts placed on him as a rookie in 2020. A perfect fit for our squad, as what kind of team would we be without a draft bust? If there was one thing this team was lacking, it was a player with no experience. Eamon Thompson, the rookie drafted 4th overall, found his way onto this team because we needed a guard to come into the game completely unprepared and make some mistakes for us. Eamon will eventually be traded as he develops in Houston, however 15.4% from 3 offers absolutely no spacing and his 61% free throw percentage is gonna offer diminishing results as our roster hopes to get to the line. Not much to say here, the half G leaguer will provide us limited results within his minutes which is exactly what we're looking for. My back! Oh, my back! After Trey Young put him in the infinite Tsukiyomi, Ben Simmons will find his way onto our roster to play a few games of defense before missing the season with a back injury. I broke my back. I'm sure most of you know why Simmons is on the list playing backup small forward, as Simmons flat out refuses to shoot the ball and insists on passing to guys to give the impression he's making plays. In 31 minutes a game before his injury, Simmons put up 7 points, 7 assists, and 11 rebounds. The stats aren't bad, but Ben is here to pretty much clog up the paint by pitching a tent in the dunker spot on offense. The GMLB logo himself is also playing out of position, which won't help whatsoever on offense. P.J. Tucker's corpse will work to give the impression he's playing defense while somehow convincing 90% of NBA fans that he can still hit corner threes. Tucker will be the go-to player to get cooked by Kevin Durant or Luka Doncic on any given night, hopelessly willing his body to chase NBA Hall of Famers for 15 minutes a game, about two hours after his bedtime. James Harden's suitcase averages 1.3 rebounds while shooting 31% from the field and 31% from three. We'll chalk that up to cataracts. This may be the worst fit for our team, but surely we needed a locker room vent to coach Eamon Thompson. One of the steepest declines in NBA Twitter narratives I've personally ever seen, Jared Vanderbilt will round off our team as a small ball backup center. Averaging three points and four boards, Vanderbilt will use his length to misfire three-pointers and limit our advantages from the arc. Currently shooting 11% from three at the time of making this video, Vanderbilt might just be the biggest offensive shitter our roster contains. We'll work overtime to hide him on offense by sticking him in the corner like the Lakers do. And they wonder why they lose. Still somehow getting minutes in Los Angeles, the former Spartan reps the Big Ten to the best of his ability, averaging 5 points and 1 assist in 17 minutes of action. Honestly, I'm going to tell you how it is. I close my eyes and imagine the most mid player in the NBA based solely on subjective rationalization, and Max Christie came to my mind. I'm going to roll with it for our first wild card pick.
I'm gonna be honest, man. If you couldn't tell already, I got a script for most of these players, but yeah, man, I I don't know what to say for this one. This could go a lot of different ways. I guess I'll just propose the question. Is the Nasus Antetokounmpo the worst rostered player in the NBA? That that's an honest question, and I'm not I'm not hating, but like I'm really interested to know what you guys think. And if not, then who is it? All right, that's it. That's our roster. Welcome back to the final part of this video where we're going to put this roster into 2K24 and we're going to my GM this thing and sim a whole season to see if we truly are worse than the Pistons. And we're going to start off with the game against the Heat here. Shout out Daniel for, for going ahead and doing this for me. Big help. Uh, the goal of this was to pretty much decline any trades to keep our roster together as much as possible obviously injuries are going to happen and things of that nature but um you know as you could see we're getting a lot of those green w's definitely a lot more than we anticipated so ultimately this thing might have been just a giant a giant fuck up but we're gonna see <laughs> um so we finished off the season 31 and 51. It seems like the guys really got along. Might be that PJ Tucker veteran presence. As you can see, chemistry 100%. Uh, we absolutely tanked our profit, but 31 and 51. So ultimately, this video was pretty much useless. Thank you all for being here. We were not worse than the Pistons. But uh, if you enjoyed the video, I put a lot of effort into this one. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe. And as always, we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.